Welcome! In this video I'll show you how to solve the integral of 1 over a plus bx squared inside of a square root, right? The square root of a plus bx squared. Now here a and b are, you know, simply any uh, constants. I just wanted to leave it open in case your integral looks a little bit different. You can plug in the values for a and b uh, that suit your particular case. Now whenever we have to solve anything where we have the square root and something inside squared, right? We have x squared or something plus x squared. Whenever we have something like that, your mind should immediately go to trigonometric identity. It may not always be the solution, but if we have something squared, right? We have a lot of trigonometric identities that involve something squared. So for example, um, we have, right, the sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to one. Um, so that means, right, one minus some of these squared would give us something squared. What I mean is, for example, cosine squared of, well, let's just say theta, I was leaving it open, but uh, this is one minus sine squared of theta, right? And for example, we also have that the tangent squared of theta plus one is equal to the secant uh, squared of theta, right? And it, this, of course, comes from this same identity. So the point is that there's a lot of trigonometric identities that involve something squared. So whenever we have something plus x squared, that means that we can maybe use a substitution that puts this into the form of something trigonometric, and that maybe in the end we get, for example, cosine squared, which would cancel out the square root, or secant squared, which will also cancel out the square root, or something like that, right? So that is um, where your mind should be going when you see something like this. Now, in this particular case, notice we have a plus b. We have these a and b that are kind of annoying, so we will have to deal with them. Now, what would I recommend here? Well, first of all, notice that we have a plus, right? We don't have a minus, so it's very unlikely that something of this form uh, will do us any good. However, um, we know that this trigonometric identity has a plus. So maybe we could go for bx is equal to the tangent um, of theta, or rather the square root of b, right? Because we want that this thing squared is tangent squared, right? So the first step towards actually solving this would be to try to put it into the form of something like this. So that means we need to have this one. So step number one would be to factor out a outside of the square root, right? So that means I'm gonna do this step by step. So this means square root of a factor of one plus b over a x squared, right? I haven't done anything illegal. And now I can take out the a from the square root and we end up with one over the square root of a. And now we have something like one plus something squared, right? Now to make this very apparent, I'm going to write this as the square root of b and the square root of a, and then write this, and actually this entire thing, I'm gonna write it squared, right? So I'm not changing anything, I'm just changing notation, right? The square root of b squared, the square root of a squared, and x squared. And now it should be much more apparent that we can use something like x times the square root of b over a, this is equal to the tangent of theta, which means, of course, that this entire thing here, right, so let's just plug it in, so 1 over square root of a, the integral of, well, the, I, I haven't replaced the x yet, I will do it soon, and square root of 1 plus tangent squared of theta. So now we can see that we have our desired form. However, we haven't gotten rid of dx yet. So let's find it uh, from here. So dx, right, we take the derivative, b and a, they stay the same. What is the derivative of tangent theta? That is simply secant squared of theta d theta. Okay, so this now becomes 1 over the square root of a, integral of, now dx is Let's see, we have to solve from here. So we have to multiply by square root of a over b. So that is what dx is. So we have square root of a over b and then secant squared of theta d theta. And then we divide by the square root of one plus tangent squared of theta. But one plus tangent squared of theta 
is secant squared. So we get the square root of secant squared theta. But the square root of secant squared is simply secant. So we have secant squared of theta divided by secant. So we can cancel them out and we get integral of secant theta with some constants lying around. So the square roots of a, they cancel out. So this thing is now 1 over the square root of b, integral of secant theta d theta. And this is something that I've already shown you in another video. If it, I, I'm going to explain it again, but a little bit quicker. If this maybe seems a little bit difficult, then consider going back to that other video, which I will link in the description. Okay, so to solve this, we have to multiply and divide by the secant of theta plus the tangent of theta, right? We multiply and we divide by this plus tangent theta. And the point of this is that now we can say, okay, let's use a substitution of the form w, which is equal to secant theta plus tangent theta. And the derivative of this will be dw, right? The derivative of the secant is secant theta tangent theta. And the derivative of the tangent is the secant squared theta and all of this d theta. So here we can factor out, right, the w, we can factor out secant of theta, and we still have the tangent of theta plus secant of theta. And this is exactly w. So dw is secant of theta w d theta. And that means that d theta is dw divided by w secant theta. And why is this important? Because now this secant will cancel out this secant. So let's plug it in so that you can see it. So 1 over the square root of b, integral of secant of theta. Now let me just rewrite both of these as w. So we have w divided by w. We have d theta, which we know is dw divided by w secant theta. So we see that the w's cancel out, secants cancel out, and we are left with, so this is 1 over square root of b, integral of dw divided by w, which we know is simply, right, so this is 1 over square root of b times the natural log of uh, w plus c. And of course, what is the natural log of w? Well, we simply have to undo our substitution. So this would be 1 over the square root of b. And then we have the natural log of, let's see, w is the secant of theta plus tangent of theta. And then we have, of course, our constant. And of course, <laughs> what, uh, what is the secant of theta and the tangent of theta, right? And because we didn't start off with that, we started out with x. So our initial substitution was x. So I'm going to show it here. Our initial substitution was x square root of b over a. This was the tangent of theta. So this, of course, implies, right? This implies that we have some triangle where this angle right here is theta and its tangent is this thing right there. And since the tangent is the opposite side divided by the adjacent side, that means that this side is x square root of b over a, and this side is 1, right? And of course, this side right here, the hypotenuse, this due to Pythagoras theorem, this is 1 plus x squared b over a, and the square root of all of that. And now with this, we can easily find uh, the secant of theta, because the secant is 1 over cosine. And from here, we can see that the cosine of theta, this is this side, uh, sorry, 1 divided by the hypotenuse. So that is 1 divided by 1 plus x squared b over a. And the secant is 1 over this, which means that the secant of theta is square root of 1 plus x squared b over a. All right. And now we simply plug everything in here. So this is 1 over the square root of b. And then we have the natural log of. So now secant of theta, which we know is the square root 
of, let me check again, it is square root of 1 plus x squared b over a, and then we have plus the tangent, but the tangent is x square root of b over a. And then we of course plus c. So there we go, this is our final result. This is the result of the integral of some general a plus bx squared inside of a square root in the denominator. So I hope that this video was useful to you. If it was, please make sure to leave a like on the video, comment and subscribe, and maybe even consider checking out my Patreon. I'll see you on the next video. Thank you very much for watching.